Hey there boys and girls, welcome back to Back Pocket Game Reviews and today we are going to tackle a little bit of news here specifically regarding Nintendo. Uh, some of you are well aware that I have a very fond place in my heart for Nintendo. I do love me some Nintendo products and a lot of that is because I grew up with Nintendo and I'm sure a lot of you guys kind of understand that love for Nintendo. So. Recently, specifically as in like, the other day, Nintendo's president was quoted, stating, part of the quote was, flexibility is just as important as ingenuity. We aren't really fixated on our consoles, he said. At the moment, we're offering the uniquely developed Nintendo Switch and its software, and that's what we're basing how we deliver the Nintendo experience on. That being said, technology changes. We'll continue to think flexibility, or flexibly about how to deliver that experience as time goes on. Nintendo's history goes back even further than that, and through our struggles that they face, yada, yada, yada. So, here's, here's the thing. A lot of people are interpreting this as, well, they're not going to really be creating another console. Honestly, I don't really see that worded that way. And if Nintendo did get out of the console game, there's one point I'd like to point out. For most companies, you don't make money on consoles. It's just like when people are like, oh my god, why is Xbox putting everything on PC? You don't make money off of consoles. You make money off of games. So moving games, getting licensing for games to be on your platform. Uh, subscriptions like online or Game Pass. Those are where the money comes from. That is what sells for you. Uh, the console itself, you're usually either breaking even or taking a loss on. Sometimes towards the end of the console's life cycle, they may start to make a profit on it. And I know that seems absolutely absurd, but sometimes you gotta spend money to make money. There are a lot of industries that are like this, for example, printers. Most of the time with a printer, if you buy it, they are selling it to you at a lowered cost because they know they'll make the money back on the ink. They want you into their ecosystem. Um, and that's how they get it. That's where the money then starts to come in. But for example, with Microsoft, even if they get you into the Windows ecosystem, to some degree, they're able to make more money by you then buying Forza on it. Uh, the more people your stuff is available to, in theory, the more money you can make. Now, for example, with Nintendo, Nintendo does not sell their systems at a loss. They sell it for about cost. So Nintendo makes a very slim, if any, profit, uh, usually just a couple bucks so they can round it up to like a normal number, um, but they're usually very close to cost. And actually it was a big part of the criticism with the Switch was when people were like, oh, why doesn't it come with a game? Well, most systems at release don't come with a game. I mean, Xbox didn't come with game day of release, neither did PlayStation. And to be honest, the Switch is drastically cheaper than what both of those were at release. Uh, but, there's something very different about Nintendo, and it's not just that. So even with them not really making money and not really losing money on it, that's never going to be like a game changer for them. So if they did get out of the console business saying, oh, we don't really make money on this, fair enough. However, there's one big difference with Nintendo. and Even some other game developers like Cliff Blazinski has even, have even pointed this out before. Um, so there's one magical thing Nintendo has. Nintendo makes games for their hardware. Nintendo can curate you the whole experience from what you're playing it on, from what different features that they have available for these games. This is, this is a multifaceted thing for them when they're like, oh, well, we want to be able to do this in a game. Well, we, we can just make the console capable of doing that. So whether it be like the distance thing on the bottom of the Switch con Joy-Con, I, I, you know, I don't know if that's ever really going to get used outside of like, what was that stupid little sports game? Uh, I'm not gonna remember. Mm. 
It was, it was a release title, I just don't remember what it was. You'd eat the sandwiches by moving it closer and whatnot. But there are a lot of features that Nintendo can build into their games because their hardware is capable of giving them those features. Like when they started doing motion controls with the Wii. Did you notice that Nintendo is the only successful company at doing motion controls? When you look over at Microsoft's Kinect, it didn't succeed, it didn't do well. A lot of people disliked the, the Kinect and a lot of that came into play with, you know, the whole big brother and, oh, I'm so worried they're spying on me, but now we have Google Homes all over our house, so who the hell cares? I didn't have an issue with Connect. I had a Connect. Uh, sometimes I wish I still had a Connect, but they're way too expensive still for what they are. So there, there's always like a trade-off here, and I don't, I don't see Nintendo being willing to give that up. And one thing that they've always focused on is when you look at their consoles. This is a big part of the reason why even Microsoft has stated that they're not a competitor to Microsoft. Sony and Microsoft are competitors. They make a very, very similar product and they duke it out head to head. All right, so Nintendo, how do they fit into that picture? Well, Sony and Microsoft kind of try to sometimes add Nintendo's features, but Nintendo is making a very different set of games. So when you look at Nintendo games, Nintendo games aren't taking your places of your Call of Duties or your Uncharted series. Nintendo is making a very curated experience that, well, only they really offer. So that's kind of where it leaves them in a realm of their own. Uh, the only people I would probably say if they were to actually get back in the game would be competition in Nintendo it would be Sega, but we all know Sega can't really make much of a good game anymore, especially if it has to do with Sonic. If Sega's involved and it's a Sonic game, it's gonna be trash. Hence why Sonic Mania was good, because it wasn't Sega. I mean, Sega published it, but they didn't make it. So, when you really think about this, would Nintendo ever give up that level of control? And could that potentially, well, hurt them? Because they could always go and make games for the other platforms and then their games would be widely available to pretty much everyone. And let's be honest, Nintendo would sell insanely well. If you could go and get the new Mario on the PlayStation, the funny part to that is people ask that in GameStop. You will have people come in and be like, you got the Mario game for the PlayStation? What? My brain cells just off themselves the second you said that. So, that is a level of control though that no other company has, no other company can do, and Nintendo makes amazing games. Nintendo could sell pretty much anyone's console just by being on that platform. If you think about it, that's why people buy Nintendo consoles. That, and they tend to be relatively innovative. Uh, even when you look at pretty much every console they've made since the GameCube, it's been all innovation. It hasn't been, hey, let's make a traditional style console. Even if you look at the N64, it'd be kind of hard. They were still starting to go off their own direction at that point. Um, there were a lot of things they did very differently during that time frame, even than like PlayStation, uh, than Sega. It was just very different. That is kind of Nintendo's thing. Be different. Um, GameCube, obviously, the controller alone was different and made you just kind of like, what, why, and then the mini discs. Um, but then they came out with the Wii, where they started doing motion controls, and the Wii U, where you have this tablet, and the Wii U was actually very innovative. It was very well-made console. It was very well thought out for what it was able to do. But it was essentially the stepping stone to get you to what is the Switch. The Switch is literally like the natural form of evolution of the Wii U. It's what it is. It is your Wii U that evolved, like a Pokemon. That's the Wii U's final form. And that's why you get so many Wii U games on it. The Switch is the Wii U's final form. But, with that also being said, you can also get their innovation in the handhelds. If they were to pull out of that market, which now they've kind of just combined, You've got the Switch, which is a handheld and a console. It's literally, Nintendo's handhelds sell insanely well. Like, stupidly well. 
Uh, especially the 3DS. 3DS was very successful. So is the DS. Um, and that's one thing Nintendo's able to do. They're able to kind of capture a very wide audience based off of their innovations and their capability of appealing to a wide audience such as casuals and hardcore gamers. Um, but the Switch is literally almost a flawless console. When you look at what it's able to do and the innovation that they brought forward to it, I can literally play games from last generation wherever the hell I'm at. I can be anywhere. I can't take an Xbox 360 with me everywhere and enjoy it. I mean, you could, but it's going to be really bulky and it's going to red ring and, you know, too many issues. So, I couldn't really see them giving that up. And I think a lot of what the CEO is really, or the president is really talking about right here, is just they're not currently looking at future hardware. They're not currently worried about where are they going to take it next. And to be fair, I don't think Nintendo usually starts too far in advance to look forward. Um, I think a lot of it's like, I want this in my game. And when you look, literally think of all of the creative minds they have at Nintendo, they have so many creative individuals and so much that they do to furnish and try to keep that creativity alive um, that I think a lot of it does kind of come down to the final seconds for them before they need to really start finalizing stuff. And Hardware, like spec-wise, has never really been their big focus. They're not sitting there worried about, can we hit 180 frames per second? That's just not, it's not where their concern is. It probably never will be. And Nintendo's games look gorgeous because they don't worry about that. When you go back and you look at um, Wind Waker, Wind Waker has aged beautifully from most games of that generation. When I go back and pop in most PS2 games, I'm like, oh my god, my eyes are bleeding. The jagged edges are so sharp. But then I pop in Wind Waker and I'm like, oh my god, this game is gorgeous. And people hated that game at release. They were so mad because of the graphical style of that game. But here we are. Years later, like, damn, that game's beautiful. So, I, I think there's a lot more to think about, and I think that us focusing on a quote that very clearly wasn't intended to necessarily mean how everyone is taking it. Literally, all of these YouTubers, Nintendo's done making consoles. No, they're not. Probably, probably doubtful. I really couldn't see them being like, let's just make it for everyone else's consoles. Granted, a lot of people said that. A lot of people like, they can just make games. Nintendo's totally done after the Wii U. If you can bounce back from the Wii U and the Virtual Boy, you can bounce back from pretty much anything. And the Wii, I, and I'm not saying because the Wii U was bad. I'm saying because it sold terribly. The Virtual Boy was bad. I really don't have many ways to defend that to you. I owned one. It was, I liked it. It was bad. I liked it, it was bad. We all like bad things, okay? Someone out there likes something worse than what I like. Guys, let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. Obviously, this is open for interpretation. It's a quote, unless he clarifies, then there is no interpretation because he said it. Uh, <laughs> if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a thumbs up. If you wanna follow me anywhere else, all links as always are in the description box down below. Especially if I stream tonight. We might we might stream tonight. We'll find out here. Also, uh, if you're new to the channel, you can click that subscribe button, ding that little bell, and we have a little lifelong commitment of ourselves, don't we? It's like you're putting a ring on it, because bell in the ring. Yeah, it was a bad joke, and I even explained it. Guys, I'll see you all soon. I'll have plenty more content coming for you, so stick around.